So anyway, thanks uh, thanks for taking a few minutes to do this with us. Um, and I think it's there's some irony um, that we're doing this interview via uh, teleconference uh, as we are getting ready to celebrate the 10th anniversary of a building that was created to bring people together. And here we are socially distanced and electronically distanced apart, but um, we're here to talk about this, this building that has brought us together. Um, and in a very public way. And so the first thing that I'd like to bring up is, um, I remember so clearly that when you came on the project um, and you learned just how public a building this was, that it was a state owned building, that it was owned by the citizens, this collection was owned by the citizens, that it struck a chord with you that I think began uh, a process with you in thinking about lowercase d, as we've talked about, a democratic uh, place and making a place that reflected the nature of, of the building. And um, I think it, there was conversations at the very beginning. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, how that affected you in those early days. Well, you know, there, there were things about some of my first four or five trips that were really impactful. Um, but I think the most important one was as, you know, I'd kind of arrive in the early morning, I'd arrive at about nine o'clock to the museum for our get togethers, our meetings together. And that was about the time, around 10 o'clock maybe, where all of the school children would arrive. You know, the, the school buses would pull up. They'd let the kids out. These were really young children who, who would come from all over the state. One was from Wilmington, Asheville, all over the place. And I kept seeing that on visit after visit after visit. I saw them move around and look at the art and look and listen. <clears throat> and... Gradually, I began to see the project through their eyes. It was, it, was, it was really impactful. Of course, I knew that kids come to the museum. This may be the only museum they, they, they arrive to, they have the experience to arrive to. But seeing it and seeing their faces and seeing their eyes when they'd look at a, at a contemporary work at a work that was made during the Renaissance, at, 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 a, at a wonderful piece of contemporary culture, I saw their eyes light up. And I really began to see this work we were making together as a way that it would move a generation if we did it right. If we did this well, these kids, probably their only museum experience, maybe in their lifetimes, would be impactful. And so I think hence, we, we made the building more transparent. We made it more inviting. It was one of the reasons why we began to think about natural light in the building to, to kind of combine art and light, this uplifting spirit of, of seeing these works through the eyes of nature. And so those kids made a, made a really important um, moment to me. You and Larry gave me my first opportunity to make a museum. And we thought very early on about what the values were going to be of the building. What, what are going to be the impactful moments that we can, or, or these impactful ideas that we can instill in this building that would resonate this kind of, as you say, this diaphanous quality uh, there. And a couple of things came together. One, we were building in a park. And so nature had to be a part of this, had to be infused in the experience of moving through the museum. We also had plenty of land and the museum was free. So it, 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 all of those things combined allowed us to make a building that was a one-story building. 
and speak early on about the idea that nature is not just trees and grass. It's not just plants, but nature is light. And the movement of light and the passage of time are connected. The movement of light and the shade and shadow it produces and the color it produces across the months and seasons of our lives. And so to begin to infuse this sense of nature, not only with these kind of garden vestibules, so that you can physically move in and out of museum from, from many doors, but also the fact that when a cloud moves overhead, the atmosphere of the museum changes. And I think that very notion of, of having art and nature come together was something that, that we discovered early on in the, in the museum and, and experience of making it. And we wanted you know, to, to make that the fundamental um, experience there so that all of those remarkable works that your museum has, the gold frame paintings, the Renaissance works, European and American works, contemporary works, everything could be seen under this um, amazing light. 